the Western Metrophilary. Uh, we have six species of, of uh, Boloria, the lesser filaries in Washington, and uh, this is what it looks like mostly. It looks actually quite a bit like the uh, greater filaries, mostly. It has that orange pattern, uh, orange color with the uh, black line patterns. The eggs are pretty typical of brush hooks. Uh, looks good. Looks good here. Um, the eggs are kind of like a truncated cone, and they have these these uh, vertical ver vertical uh, ridges and cross with a bunch of horizontal ridges, uh, ridges and cross with a bunch of little horizontal ridges. Very typical of uh, brush foot eggs. Here's the first end star larva. <coughs> uh, very small little thing. That's only two millimeters long. Uh, so it's, these are little tiny little things. And the second end star. Uh, quite black. They turn dark very early, as you can see. Uh, so they have a shiny black head, which is slightly heart shaped. And then they, they develop these spines. Uh, each spine has these little hairs or setae uh, sticking up from them. There's a third end star. Uh, oops, I a little too fast. <laughs> Uh, fourth instar, just kind of, with, with the fritillaries, kind of the, each instar is a little bit like more of same, a little, but a little bit bigger. And the final, the fifth instar, final. Uh, they, uh, they develop these rows of, of uh, orange markings, and you see that some of the spines turn yellow, at least at the base. They get, get to be pretty <coughs> colorful. And these are very typical of the pupae. They're hanging pupae, uh, all of the all of the fritillaries, the graders and the lessers, have hanging, ha hanging uh, pupae. <clears throat> they hang by the posterior end, the tail end, uh, and they don't have any girdle for it, they just, just hang. That's pretty typical of uh, pupae that are going to hatch pretty soon. Uh, in other words, they don't, they, this is not a type of pupa that usually overwinters. They, the ones that overwinter are going to be secured a little more soundly. <coughs> Here again is the adult, uh, and the reason I'm showing this slide again is I want to compare it to a, a look-alike species. This is the western meadow fritillary, and this is the eastern meadow fritillary, mm -hmm. the, the meadow fritillary. Uh, the reason I'm showing these is because the conference is coming up here in a couple of weeks, and we hope to be seeing both of these species. They're very similar, but notice how the wings are truncated and squared off, whereas the western meadow fritillary is very rounded. You can see there's no square. Uh, uh, pattern there and you can see the difference. And then ventrally, this is the western meadow fritillary. Ventrally, you have these, these big yellow spots that kind of amass together, and then this, this large pinkish area on the back half of the wing. This is the hind wing. And when we look at the Bologna, it's uh, the, the meadow fritillary. It's pretty similar, except these spots are very different. They're just kind of a mass of orange spots. You don't have those uh, more discrete spots that are yellow and mm -hmm. see, see the difference. Mm -hmm. uh, they're hard to describe because they're just pretty complex. But when you see them, keep it us for definitely the success. Food plants, uh, they feed on, uh, they feed on uh, violets. Uh, not all of our lesser fritillaries do, but these two happen to. Uh, and they, they use several different species. These are two that they almost certainly use, the nuttalls violet and the Canada violet. But it's also the uh, viola, uh, uh, viola, Flavia? Sorry? Flavia, is that what you want to do? Flavella is what it was. Viola glabella, which is another yellow flower, which is very similar to this one. And uh, these are used by, by the lesser fruits. So that's really all I get out. We get very short, so we leave off as much time as possible. <laughs> <laughs>